Uh, I, I take this adage out into the market that um, uh, not all customers are equal. Some are more equal than others. Because there is this uh, phrase that did the rounds for years, the customer is king. And my belief is the customer is only king when we tell him he is. And he's only king when we know or he is spending money with us in sufficient, um, at, at sufficient levels to change our current futures. You know, if a customer, we've got some good customers that are spending lots of money, that makes a difference to all of us. Um, so my view of a universal service, of everybody gets the same type of service, creates a rod for your back that is very difficult to get rid of. And the same with client services, that if you have clients phoning you, then there are certain people who maybe need their phones answered in two rings because they're very important. They represent um, a higher proportion of your revenue. And those that represent a lower proportion of revenue maybe get answered, or there's not even a chance for them to phone. They have to do everything online. They register their request online and you phone them back when you have time, but within a service charter, which might be three days or four days or five days. But what we've done um, in the Western world, and I only, only experience the Western world, is we've created a universality of service that all customers receive the same level of service, no matter what value they are to you. And I don't think that's right. I think that is so far wrong that uh, I've written a number of blogs about it. And I think people need to change. I think there needs to be a fundamental shift and look at not only the cost to acquire, because in marketing terms we look at the cost to acquire, we look at response rates, we look at the value, but we don't look at a value over a long enough period of time. We look at uh, first order value. So the ROI models that are generated in the marketing world are generally very simplistic. I sent you something, you responded and you spent £10 with me. It cost me 10p to send it to you, you spent £10, I've made a huge ROI on a first order basis. I think the return on investment needs to be longer. We need to look at customers and say, how long do I keep my customers for? Do I keep them for one year, two year, three year, four year? And if they spend over that time 50,000 pounds, then my 10p has generated 50,000 pounds worth of revenue for the business. But not only looking at the long-term um, ROI, we should look at the cost to serve. That I send you, um, a 10p communication, you respond to it and you spend £10 with me, so that's fantastic. But marketeers never take into consideration the cost to serve. What's it cost me to take that order? How long did they spend on the telephone? Did they send it back? Was it returned to sender? Did I get it back? How much fraud was committed? How many times did they phone and complain about it? Um, how many people did I have to have on telephones or in the field answering questions and queries from those people. So I think our model needs to extend not only from the cost to acquire but look at the cost to serve and we need to compare the two. And where the cost to serve is larger than the, the revenue being generated then we need to think about those kinds of things, are they worth having? And if they're not worth having we deem that they're never going to grow, they aren't going to be big treasure type of accounts, not going to be people we want or they're going to, um, they may well stay with us for 10 years, but they're always going to drain our resources. Um, they're never going to go into big treasure accounts. Some years ago, uh, the mobile phone industry launched the uh, pay-as-you-go model because the uh, measurement that they were being put under by the city was the number of new handsets they were signing in a quarter. So of course the pay-as-you-go model was very easy to put into the marketplace. And, and it was, and it was put into the marketplace and it was very successful. It generated huge revenue in respect of um, a new acquired handsets. However, it didn't generate lots of long-term revenue. People like my father-in-law uh, bought a phone, put £35 on it, got the phone for free basically and five years later still had five pounds of credit on his phone. The cost to serve 
of providing him with the phone and then dealing with his free calls all the time to check out how much he'd got on his, on his phone still must have cost way in excess of the £35 he ever put on it. Yet, that was the model that was deployed at the time. And what wasn't taken into account was the long-term cost of acquiring those customers. So I think the aspect of, uh, in business terms of um, a, making a rod for your own back is really, you know, you're going to, if you have a, a universal customer service charter, you're going to create difference, uh, you have to create different models to suit the market. And this is like the telephone model, they resolve that by having much more, it's text based, you send a text, we send you a text back, we don't get involved with you on a day to day basis, you get topped up, it stores now, you have cards, but it's taken 10 years to get that market sorted. But they have a very different model of servicing it than they do their large corporate accounts or larger private accounts that are pay monthly contracts. So I think the, the whole aspect of a universality of service creates issues for business.